Hello and welcome to The Chosen Few, the one and only place for you. My name is Isabel Santine and I just wanted to go ahead and demonstrate the hardware aspect of the SAVE project. SAVE stands for Software Analog Video Emulation. And for the past couple of years now, I've been working on developing a software suite that is capable of generating analog video signals. And just this summer, I was working with my Raspberry Pi over here to basically try and display those signals on a real CRT television. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and try it out and see where the project is at right now. So the setup I have here is kind of elaborate. Um, this is my oscilloscope. I'm not actually using that uh, for this demo. Then we have the Raspberry Pi which is connected to the breadboard via the GPIO interface. Then I have this breakout board, which allows me to access all the pins very easily with jumper cables. And this clump of resistors right here is actually an R2R resistor ladder DAC, and it's connected to all the relevant pins on the GPIO output. And then I just have this orange and black cable. The orange is the output from the DAC. The black is the ground from the GPIO breakout board. So then that goes to this um, AV modulator, which at the moment isn't on. It doesn't have power because I have to switch up uh, um, what's plugged in over there as well as the audio output from the Pi. That's going to this um, audio input over here. And this does only accept mono audio input, I believe. And then what this modulator does is I can set a specific channel number for analog video to for it to appear on the CRT. And then it modulates it as an RF signal in either the VHF or UHF band. The CRT side of things is very simple. The output from the modulator is going into the input of the CRT. And of course, we have this power cable here. The plug is over there. And I'm going to plug it into that power strip soon enough. The final aspect of the setup is the command center which is basically just my laptop, an audio interface, keyboard, mouse, all that good stuff. Here we are. So I'm just gonna CD into the right directory. Let's compile that. Then afterwards, we simply run it. Okay, there we go. So over here, you can see the overmod, overmodulation light blinking. So clearly there is a actual valid video signal going over this line. This line right here. And yeah, let's go ahead and turn on the CRT. And we should have our video signal. And there we have it. <laughs> So this is just a scene from Dragon Ball Z. It's actually from one of my favorite internet videos titled The Balls Are Inert. <laughs> um, someone took an HD rip of this episode of the show and basically recreated that older version of the video that was in lower quality. So I used that and converted it using my laptop and the GPU demodulate or the GPU modulation code that I've mentioned in previous videos on the channel. You'll notice that it's the sync signal is very like unstable. And that's actually due to the fact that the Raspberry Pi is running Linux, which is not a real-time operating system by design. So it has to jump a lot to the kernel and other processes, and that causes inaccuracies in the timings of each frame display. So what my code does without getting into too much detail is it basically 
displays groups of five frames, which is ten fields each, because there's two fields per frame. And then uh, it lets the kernel do its stuff in between those groups of five frames. So I noticed that that gives the most consistent signal with the least interruption, and uh, yeah, the results speak for themselves. Unfortunately, the color sig because the signal is so unstable, it's impossible for the CRT to extrapolate any color from the image. But during that um, first playback of the demo, you can see this version right here in detailed areas, in areas that you'd expect to be colored, there's a lot of graininess. That's actually the color signal appearing, being rendered as black and white by the CRT. And then uh, previously in the other run, towards the end, you can notice that those little bumps and uh, details aren't there because I actually did a black and white version after the color signal version. But yeah, so that's not all I have to show for today either because there is a version of this demo that operates with audio and video coming simultaneously from the Raspberry Pi, which to me is pretty insane. So let's go ahead and set that up. So real quick, super easy to do. Let's go ahead and check out the previous commit. I know I could use branches too. And compile it and go ahead and run it with the demo audio. So the audio will be a little bit out of sync, just because, but only by like less than a second, because I'm using FF Play on a different thread just to play the audio file. So the timing isn't super accurate right now, but in the future that can be improved by basically implementing an audio player that runs in tandem in the same process as the video display driver. So that's something I want to do in the future. Hey, I just realized we're going to be needing the Dragon Radar. Oh, well, I had it, but then I gave it to Piccolo. Got it? Yes, that's right. But I think it's in my other pants pocket. And you can notice the sync signal or the signal sync, rather, is a lot worse with the audio going. And that's because of what I mentioned again. Um, it has, the processor spends more time on that other audio thread, or rather audio threads, loading stuff into buffers so that it can be played through the hardware interface. And that is time that um, the video driver then doesn't have to accurately time the next frames. So that's why the video signal looks worse significantly with audio going, but that's something that I hope to fix by either increasing the performance of the audio driver by, again, integrating it into the same process and application, or by getting faster hardware, i.e. a Raspberry Pi 4. But that's not going to happen for quite a while because they're out of stock everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the demo. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this kind of in-depth dive into the hardware aspect of the SAVE project. Um, I know that a lot of you are more interested in the software aspect of it, both for the um, composite video signal rendering. I do have a working software modulator and complementary demodulator, and I hope to build similar components for um, emulating videotape as well, especially VHS and other derivative formats. So that is definitely still on the horizon for this project, but for now I want to focus on a couple of other projects that I'll announce soon. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!